Hey, I'm Ken, and this video is part three of my Introduction to FlowLab series. Anyone can sign up for free at flowlab.io and follow along in their web browser. In this video, we'll add some behaviors to our game objects to start making them interactive. Let's begin by making our character respond to keyboard controls. We add behaviors directly to a game object by clicking it, selecting Edit, then clicking the Behaviors button. We could just add a predefined bundle to make our character controllable, but in this video, we'll be building up all the logic from scratch to demonstrate how to design custom logic using behaviors. Behaviors are how logic and game mechanics are built in FlowLab. Complex logic is created by assembling simple behavior blocks, which can be linked together to operate similarly to an electric circuit. Trigger behaviors are activated by reacting to events that occur while the game is running. All the game logic happens as a result of these triggers, so this is generally the best place to begin when adding new behaviors. In this case, we want to respond to the player's key presses by moving this character object around the level, so we'll click to add a new keyboard trigger. Most behaviors have properties that can be accessed by clicking them. This behavior lets us set the key it will respond to, so let's start with the right arrow key. I'll click Change Key, and then press the keyboard key I'd like to use, in this case, the right arrow. I'd like this behavior to continue triggering for as long as the key is held down, so I'll select Repeating, then click OK. Now, what we want is for the object to move when this key is pressed. So let's add a couple more behavior blocks. From the logic and math section, we'll add a number to store the speed in. We'll set this number's value and give it a name. The name is optional, but they make understanding complicated sets of behaviors easier. From the properties section, we'll grab a velocity block. In physics, velocity is the combination of an object's speed and direction, which is just what we need here. Okay, so we've added some behaviors, but they'll need to be connected together to do anything interesting. Behavior blocks have outputs on the right side and inputs on the left. The outputs of one can be connected to the inputs of another to form a link, so that logic flows from left to right. This way, when one block outputs a value, the connected input of the next block is activated. Now when the keyboard key is down, it will activate the input of the connected number block. We'll connect the number block's output to the X input of the velocity, which will set the object moving to the right. To test the logic so far, we can run the game directly from this window. This speed value feels kind of slow, but we can adjust this while the game is running. That seems better. Next, we need to add a keyboard trigger for the left key and have it set the X velocity to a negative number to move left. Okay, now she's moving both forwards and backwards, but it would be better if the sprite would face the direction she's moving. So let's add a flip behavior to handle that. Now she just needs to be able to jump. So let's add a keyboard trigger and a number value for that. This time, instead of setting the velocity directly, we'll add an impulse to the object, which is a spring-like force. We'll send our value into the Y input this time, since we want the force to push upwards. Now we just tune the force a bit, and we have a playable character. As before, we can test by hitting the play button at the bottom. So our player now has custom logic to control her using the keyboard. In the next video, 
we'll add some animation to our player sprite. Thanks for watching.